Recently I made a tutorial about how to digitize VHS, DV and Hi8 video. In my workflow I used Pinnacle Dazzle analog to digital converter for capturing the video and virtual dub for encoding it and saving it to a file. Out of several models offered by Pinnacle I used a very specific one and I want to explain why I chose that particular version and why other Dazzle models are either less attractive or outright not acceptable. I'll start with the DVC-50 and DVC-80. These devices digitize the interlace and downsize analog video, then compress it even more using a proprietary codec and send it to a computer. This allows transmitting standard definition video over USB 1.0, which has data rate of only 12 megabits per second. A device driver in the host computer decompresses the incoming USB data and makes it available for capturing software. These are very old devices from the dark ages of Windows 95. The DVC-85 and DVC-90 differ between themselves only by bundled software. Both devices can capture full D1 resolution, progressive scan as well as interlaced. I suppose they employ the same Philips chip as the DVC-50 and DVC-80 for digitizing analog video. They require USB 2.0 working in high-speed mode. Because Pinnacle removed hardware compression and instead relied on faster USB protocol for carrying through uncompressed video. These devices may be still viable, but I have little information about them and I don't own one of these myself. There is no official 64-bit driver. In 2006 Pinnacle released a trio of teardrop-shaped models. Red Dazzle DVD Recorder, Blue Dazzle Video Creator, and silver or rather platinum Dazzle Video Creator Platinum. The red DVC-100 followed the path blazed by the DVC-85 and DVC-90. The device sends video without compression, which is why it requires USB 2.0 working in high-speed mode. The blue DVC-130 is a completely different animal. It digitizes analog video and compresses it into MPEG-1 or MPEG-2. Unlike the DVC-50 and DVC-80, which use compression to squeeze video data into the narrow USB 1.0 bandwidth, the DVC-130 employs hardware compression to relieve capturing program from doing it. This allows using a less powerful computer for video capture and saves time because the encoded data is saved directly into a file that can be burned to a DVD or uploaded to YouTube. The Platinum DVC-170 is almost identical to the DVC-130 except for the added or rather unlocked support for MPEG-4 hardware encoding. After releasing Red Dazzle DVD Recorder DVC-100, Pinnacle offered an updated white version Dazzle DVD Recorder Plus, model number DVC-101. Then Pinnacle marketing department went completely off the rails, mixing and matching colors, suffixes and names, so judging model number and technical capabilities by name and color became impossible. The version currently on sale online is called Dazzle DVD Recorder HD and doesn't have any model name besides generic Dazzle USB video capture device. Pinnacle's technical support could not give me a more specific model number promising to report back by email. The email they sent me didn't contain useful information, instead they gave me the product link and then asked me whether there was anything else they could help me with. Some online stores show the model number as DVC Ptenem. It's confusing that the currently sold device has 64-bit drivers only, at least this is what the product page says. If you navigate to Pinnacle's website, you will see that the only Dazzle models to have 64-bit drivers are 100, 101, 103 and 107 and they have matching 32-bit drivers as well. This mystery can be solved by spending $50 on this dongle, but I don't feel like it and neither I recommend you buying it. Instead I suggest you to get a DVC-107 for half the price or DVC-100 for a quarter of the price on eBay. If it comes without software it's even better. You don't need Pinnacle's original software, it will only limit you in your, well, endeavors. A quick note about suffixes like plus, platinum or HD. 
They identify different software packages and sometimes they are linked to hardware or software features being locked or rather unlocked. In particular, HD doesn't mean that the device can capture analog HD video. For this, you need three connector component video, not a single connector composite. HD simply means that the bundled software can work with HD video files. All of these devices are strictly standard definition. To recap, DVC-50 and DVC-80 are old devices that employ a proprietary compression to squeeze the video stream into narrow bandwidth of first-generation USB. These devices also reduce frame size and image rate. They are completely outdated and do not work with modern operating systems anyway. DVC-130 and DVC-170 compress digitized video into industry-standard MPEG-1, MPEG-2 or MPEG-4 format, which is useful if you want to go straight to DVD. You need proprietary software to capture the output. The hardware will not deinterlace your video into 50p or 60p and will not upscale it. So if you want your videos to look their best on YouTube, you still need to do extra work. In this case, why not start with the best possible quality, that is, with uncompressed video? This is what the DVC-100 and its cousins DVC-101, DVC-103 and DVC-107 are about. 15 years ago, the simplistic approach to blast uncompressed digitized video directly over USB 2.0 was considered a cost-saving solution. Today, this can be seen as a capability to capture unadulterated video as close to the original as possible, having 8 bit per color component and 4 to 2 color sampling, which is more than enough for digitizing VHS and Hi8. These models are compatible with third party software and have 32 bit as well as 64 bit Windows drivers. Windows 10 is not officially supported, but many users have positive experience with it. The drivers are available on official Pinnacle website. The Philips encoder employed in these devices does not perform hardware deinterlacing, which is great if you want to use advanced software deinterlacer like QTG MC or if you want to preserve interlacing for authoring to your DVD. Now the juicy topic of copy protection. The encoder in the Philips chip detects pseudo-sync pulses as part of the Macrovision copy protection standard and reports the result as flag co-pro within the decoder status byte. The device doesn't stop digitizing video protected with Macrovision. Instead, it simply informs capturing software that the video is copy protected. What do you think Pinnacle's DVD recorder software does when it sees copy protected flag in the data stream? Correct it refuses to capture such a video. But free third-party software doesn't care for one bit. As a purely scientific test, I was able to capture several VHS tapes published by MGM, Warner Brothers, and Paramount. Here's a short sequence from Duck Hollywood. You can see white pulses in the blanking area. This is the very first frame in the sequence before the video has stabilized. You can see four white blocks and a white stripe. These are the macrovision bars. My DVC-100 had no problem digitizing this video, and Virtual Dub had no problems capturing it. When you are shopping, make sure to get the correct model. DVC-100, 101, 103, and 107. They output uncompressed video and can handle Macrovision protected tapes, which you can capture with free software. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe.